Of course, politicians would love us to slavishly follow their slogans and platitudes with all the baggage that they carry, but journalists have a moral responsibility not to use that kind of language, even if we're accused of being unpatriotic or somehow un-Australian. It seems to me that, in fact, the most patriotic the thing that the media can do at a time of national crisis is to be fiercely sceptical of our politicians and to always question and challenge and doubt what we are told. The failure to do that has led us to disaster before. When he wrote Politics in the English Language, George Orwell fully understood the way the German media accepted the rhetoric of the Nazi party before World War II and helped lead the country not only into that brutally destructive conflict with Britain and its allies, but also into the mass slaughter of Europe's Jewish population. More recently, though, the media famously failed to do its job in questioning the intelligence that the Bush administration used to justify the invasion of Iraq in 2003. Gandhi, of course, understood the role of the media very well. He was the editor of three English weeklies. In South Africa, he launched Indian Opinion, while in India he ran Young India and then Harijan. Another Indian professor, K. Swamanathan, I think I got that pronunciation correct, said in a 1976 talk that although the papers varied according to their readers, there was a common refrain running through them all, the insistence on truth and non-violence, on fairness to all, and crucially, to my mind, the public good. Professor Swaminathan said, these provide the first principles, the firm universal framework for Gandhi's journalism, the regard for truth in the abstract, which in practice meant a reverence for fact.